welcome to another episode of marketing learn chain learning through a chain of snippets the topic for the day is literature survey which in a sense is core to research if you split the word research then you get re search searching through existing knowledge which enables building of a sound conceptual foundation for the creation of new knowledge literature survey a primer as far as the writing of papers thesis and market research reports go literature survey or literature review follows the title the abstract and the introduction and this is also referred to by labels like theoretical framework or background hypothesis development or modeling and conceptual development or framework what it basically offers you is the strength of previous research which helps you in understanding theory in understanding concepts and understanding frameworks which enables a very strong hypothesis development for the current study under consideration let us now stage gate our understanding of literature survey through three levels model identification construct identification and scale development and as usual we'll start with an analogy suppose i am planning to move into a new residential apartment then as far as models go i have the option of a very small studio flat an apartment a stand alone villa a penthouse a condominium apartment a farmhouse etc now for each of this depending upon the choice of the model i have multiple constructs that complete that model which could include a car porch a terrace garden wherever there is a terrace available a modular kitchen solar panels wardrobes theater rooms play areas and what not now each of them has got a way in which it can be conceived a scale in which it can be developed let us take kitchen as an example do i want a functional kitchen a dry utilitarian kitchen an ergonomically designed kitchen an aesthetically finished kitchen each of them has got its own scale by which i can conceive and develop that particular construct and multiple constructs like the kitchen eventually give me the final model of my choice continuing my analogy into literature survey model identification is an affirmation that my problem matches with the model which i have chosen it indicates an alignment of the problems which i have and the constructs of the given model if one model does not work then a combination of more than one model sometimes works as an example theory of recent action tra and theory of plant behavior tpb have been combined many a time to create a lot of interesting studies from models we move to constructs where how do i validate the existing constructs do i need to add no non model constructs from the existing business sphere or do i need to create completely fresh contextual constructs from constructs when we move to scale the contextualization continues in trying to understand the tonality of the scale and then mapping adapting modifying the scale to suit my current requirement in the context of scale i look at one more thing do i require all the scale items of the original study or can i eliminate some of them and at make my study meaningful summing up model identification is conceptualization of the study construct identification is a complete hypothesis development which talks about dependency control moderation and mediation and finally scale development comes down to the nitty gritties of measurement a few examples in model identification let me start with my favorite model the technology adoption model fred davis 1989 
where Davis talks about perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use as two constructs, two drivers which enable the behavioral intention of adopting technology which eventually leads to the actual system usage of technology. A decade down the line, a set of antecedent constructs were created for perceived usefulness. On the cognitive side, we looked at the communicability, demonstrability, repeatability, job relevance, etc. as far as a given technology goes. And on the softer side, the effective side, how do people perceive you as a user of technology? How does it affect your status, your prestige when you're a user of technology? That led to a set of soft, effective constructs like subjective norm and image and all of them drove perceived usefulness and then the model continued. In the same year, Parashuraman came with the technology readiness index. If the TAM model talks about the vacillation of the consumer behavior of mind when it comes to the actual adoption of technology, TRI talks about the gestalt of emotions that one goes through before getting ready for a particular technology. On the driver side, we had optimism and innovativeness and on the inhibitor side, we had discomfort and insecurity as the two constructs. Seven years down the line, Chian Hisin Lin, 2007, combined TRI and TAM to produce the TRAM model, which talks about optimism, innovativeness, discomfort and insecurity at a first level driving perceived usefulness and ease of use, and then that driving the actual usage of technology. Now, what I have just now listed is just one example. There are any number of models. The serve qual model, which talks about service quality, the prospect theory model with its theoretical underpinning on risk, blue ocean strategy, which talks about uncontested competition, Porto diamond model, which talks about the competitive advantage of a nation, as I mentioned earlier, theory of recent action and theory of plant behavior go together. The Tetra threat framework, which talks about the sustenance of a strategy. And finally, Kaplan risk framework, which categorizes risk into multiple journals. There are any number of such modeling possibilities. Coming to constructs, the Handbook of Marketing Scales by Bearden and Nettemeyer is truly a Bible for both constructs and scales. I have randomly listed two constructs per English alphabet. I have skipped only X and Z. Now look at those constructs which I have highlighted and we'll try to find some sort of interdependence. How does inertia inhibit the attitude to buy? And does this have a direct bearing on purchase intention? What is the correlation between uncertainty and risk? If risk can be reduced, does it enhance trust? And an enhanced trust, does it increase the willingness to buy? Now, each of this is a question and forms the basis for hypothesis development. Finally, coming to scale development, I offer an example of contextualization and adaptation of the measurement scale called discomfort from the Technology Readiness Index paper Parashiraman 2000. And this was adapted to one of my studies on food ordering apps. Remember that in 2017, India was just getting about ready for the online food ordering app. So the model was a good fit. There were so many scales in the original study. I'm giving you only some of those adapted scales. Let us go one by one. New technology makes it too easy for governments and companies to spy on people. The adapted scale, I have a feeling that the mobile app is spying into my food and eating habits. Today, that is the truth because the market basket analysis of Swiggy is as strong as the market basket analysis of your own mummy 
into what you are eating today. It is embarrassing when you are having trouble with a high-end gadget and people are watching. Adapted. It is embarrassing when people watch me struggle while ordering food via mobile apps. Remember, those were early days. The hassles of getting new technology to work for you usually makes it not worthwhile. It is not worthwhile learning to know how to order food from mobile apps. Sometimes you think that technology systems are not designed for the use by ordinary people. Sometimes I think that mobile food ordering app is not designed for an ordinary person like me. Like this, item by item, one can adapt and recreate a measurement scale for the current study context. Way of conclusion, let us now build the whole thing backwards from scale to construct to model. Measuring length, mass and time, you have been familiar since you were about five years old. The tailor, you would have observed him measuring your school uniform. The shopkeeper measures everything on a weigh scale. But when it came to something like a diabetics, it took you another 10 years to find out that diabetics could be measured when you saw the first blood report of either your parent or your grandparent. Today, when you are in a B school, you realize that measurement is the heart of science. And if marketing is taken as a scientific endeavor, then measurement becomes the heart of consumer evaluation. Completely diverse concepts like nostalgia, self-esteem, trust, they can all be reduced to a measured mathematical number. And whatever you measure, if that has got a feeling of universality, perpetuality, reliability, latency, abstractness and relevance. Take motivation, absolutely universal, perpetual, understandable, reliable, always relevant. And it has got that core feeling of being very, very multidimensionally abstract. A motivation cannot be reduced to one dimension. If you have such a measurable quantity, that is a construct. And things that ought to converge within that construct give you the convergent validity for the construct and the distance of that construct from other constructs give the discriminant validity for the construct. And finally, you come to good old Kronbach Alpha defined in 1951 that gives the reliability for your scale of measurement. And if your set of constructs end up with a defined, meaningful interrelationship, that is when you can claim that you have put all of them into a nomological framework, where nomology means lawful and rightful in Greek. You have ended up with a right model for analyzing your business problem. Research is a heavy topic. Hope this marketing learn chain snippet has simplified and demystified it. Hope you like the snippet. The next one is coming soon. Till then, keep liking, commenting and subscribing to your favorite channel. Thank you ladies and gentlemen.